Dear friend, from 1979 to 1995, the Seventh-day Adventist Church laid the foundation for the new doctrine. And today we are going to examine the facts and see the results today of that foundation. And I call it the rise of the Seventh-day Adventist Evangelical Megachurch mentality and keeping the carnal mind satisfied while worshiping together with the worldly Christian devil. Friends, this is a serious matter as we examine the history and the impact in the theology and the practice of the Seventh-day Adventist. Hello and thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you so much for your prayers and support. This is the lone voice, a crier in the wilderness of the internet, preparing the way of the Son of God. The literal Son of God will soon come again. And I know there are confusions that are happening even today in the Seventh-day Adventist Church. Why am I speaking? Because I serve the Seventh-day Adventist Church a generation of my prime years. And I would like to inform rather than cry aloud, educate those who may not have heard what happened to the Seventh-day Adventist Church, the church that we love, the church that we thought were founded by Ellen G. White, John James White, John Nevins Andrews, Joseph Bates, John L John and Love Borrow, Uriah Smith, and M and any others and every other stalwarts of Bible truth, and they have one thing in common: they affirm the 1872 fundamental principles, and that includes declaring that there is only one God, our Father, Jehovah, and His one literal Son. Jesus Christ, begotten, not created, the Messiah from our Father. The Father and the Son message were the message of the pioneers of the Seventh-day Adventists, and the Spirit is the representative, their Holy Spirit, not someone else. This is the message that has been obscured and confused by some of the Adventists today. Some believe in literal three gods. Some believe in literal three persons. Some believe in literal Holy Spirit as another God, another person. The confusion continues and they are defending what they do not understand. And today I would like to show you the history of the Seventh-day Adventist Church in a nutshell. You can validate or verify the verities of this facts as it is available online. So dearly beloved, Hold on to your seats and pick up your Bible. Pick up your historical curiosity and examine and search together with me what happened in the years 1979 to 1995. And it's a fact today in our church. Well, we can always argue that in history, the 19. 03 history was the beginning or the alpha of the apostasy. And in 1950s, the uh, justification of being so close to the evangelical Trinitarian Sunday keeping churches. And in the 1979 to 1995, the actual laying of the foundation of the new doctrine in the Seventh Adventist Church. Let us seek the Lord in prayer, friends. Father in heaven, May history reveal to us what is happening in your church, the church that you called, the church that had apostatized and waited for the pioneers and the founders, their descendants and those who are faithful to the 1879, 1889, until 1930s declaration publicly of their faith. And something happened along the way from 1950s and until Today, we have seen the effects. Let us, let us see, Father, through your Spirit. Help us see, Father, through your Spirit, what happened in the years 1979 to 1995. And as I read this historical facts, may your people pick up their Bibles 
and examine what's happening so that we will not be beholden to the conferences whose man and woman were being misled by the Trinitarian pastors and preachers, whether consciously or unconsciously, deliberately or ignorantly, that your people may be awakened today and lit the fire of reformation and revival in the church to restore the truth inside the seven day Adventist church. This is a tall order from you. Just like Goliath and David, this is a fight among the very, very few scattered little flock inside the church or outside the church, this fellowship marginalized, persecuted by the seven day Adventist Trinitarians. That we will hold on to uphold the banner of truth. And calling seven day Adventists today the errors of the new doctrine. I pray in the name of your son, Jesus Christ. Through your son, Jesus Christ, I pray. Amen. So let us expose this truth today, dearly beloved, by saying in 1979, the facts are clearly drawn. W. Duncan Eva and Bernard Sitton are working behind the scenes in moving an agenda to adopt the new fundamental beliefs. The revised draft was sent to the theologians at Andrews University to read it for prime time at the World Conference in April 1980. These are facts. These are documents that we can verify, verifiable archive. Back in 1946, the committee put forth an action making it almost impossible to change any belief statement. But that hurdle was overcome and now moving forward in 1980. The World General Conference in session by the Seventh-day Adventists in Dallas, Texas, of all places, officially votes to accept the Trinity Doctrine as part of the 27 fundament fundamental beliefs of the Seventh-day Adventists. By officially approving the Trinity Doctrine by vote of carnal, mortal, opinionated, Trinitarian minds, the church, the church has publicly declared that to the world that the church is following the steps of the fallen churches, the daughters of Harlot, Roman Catholic Church whose central pillar doctrine is the Trinity, and they have exact similar concept. You call it dogma, you call it teaching, you call it whatever you want. It's the same worship of three gods, God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Regardless of what you say, that is a fact. You may say it's one, three heads, one body. You may say it's united, three in one. You may say it's Unitarian, Trinitarian, or you may say tritheism, it's the same. Worship of God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Therefore, the Seventh-day Adventist Church has left the original nation, uh, pro proclamation and mission, the three angels' messages coming out, uh, Trinity Doctrine, and Sunday Keeping. That is the third angel's message, literally, technically, because the beast, Roman, is preaching Trinity and preaching Sunday as it's. Central doctrine. So the three angels' message in 1980 was obscured, including the Father and the Son, and marketing Trinity. The church in 1980 officially left the 1872 fundamental principles that are based upon an questionable authority. No longer can the Seventh-day Adventist Church be considered as the remnant of her siege, which Seed which keep the commandments of God, including Exodus 20, verse 3. Thou shalt have no other gods before me. And have the testimony of Jesus Christ, meaning to say Christ revealed his Father, not Trinity. But now simply a counterfeit new movement as a prophesied in 1903 by Ellen White. They are now ecumenical ready and compatible with the World Council of Churches. We, who are members of the Seventh-day Adventists, now subscribe to God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. A doctrine of, of Roman Catholic and a doctrine of the fallen Protestant and evangelical churches. This is the belief, exact belief that the early Adventist pioneers removed themselves from in the 1840s and 1850s. The progressive truth they are barking is returning to error. That is the Seventh-day Adventist in 1980 when they left. When the pioneers left the fallen churches to form what would become the Seventh-day Adventists, the Seventh-day Adventists in 1980 returned 
to Rome. Not found anywhere is the second and third angel's message along with no identity of the beast. Babel on her fall, his mark, his image, or God's call to come out of her. According to this cartoon, we, the apostles of Christ, declared what we have seen and heard, and we affirm our fellowship is with God the Father and His Son Jesus. The church, the Rome, Roman Catholic Church would say, no, we are the mother church, and the world follows us, not you, which is why the world's fellowship is with our Trinity God. That is very true. In 1980, ex-Jesuit priest Alberto Rivera stated all the mainstream churches, including Seventh-day Adventists, were taken over under the control of Rome by 1980. Secret terrorist, page 180, 108. 1980, the General Conference files on May 7th, 1980, the trademark of all names Seventh-day Adventists, SDA, is a commercial entity now. The General Conference hires a Catholic lawyer of all people, of all lawyers, to trademark various names, including Seventh-day Adventists under commercial law, this is the first time a Protestant church denomination appeals to the state for protection of their name. This move comes from former pastors and our leaders forming other groups bearing the same or similar name as a result of separating themselves from the apostasy that is happening within the main body. They are therefore labeled as offshoot movements as they attempt to hold to the foundation given to the original SDA church before all the changes over time. The original... Adherents of the Seventh-day Adventist Church were called offshoot. What a shame. The Seventh-day Adventist in 1980 was a new plant. It's not from the root. It is a new plant using the name of the root. So that's why when they say offshoot, that is a false narrative. That is a false accusation. Sister Ellen G. White, letter 242, October 19, 1903. How do you change religions? You change gods. She said... The principles of truth that God in his wisdom has given to the remnant church would be discarded. Our religion would be changed. She was correct, precise, truthful, succinct, and clear. The counterfeit 1987 Day Adventist Church laid the foundation in changing the, new, the doctrine. 1981, Neil C. Wilson, an associate of Leroy Edwin Frome, General Conference President, announces the church has officially adopted the Trinity Doctrine which is now number two in, this in the church's 27 fundamental beliefs. He declares before the Seventh-day Adventist Church that there is another universal and truly Catholic organization, the Seventh-day Adventist Church. Those of you who are ignorant, innocent in the Seventh-day Adventist Church today, listening to this broadcast, you are sitting in a Seventh-day Adventist Catholic Church with the doctrine of the Trinity. If you do not believe me, examine what Neil C. Wilson Published in Adventist Review, March 5, 1981, page 3. It's still there in the archives. And if you are diligent, you're able to find it in the internet. 1981, Adventist Review, July 30th, special edition on Bible doctrines. The Trinity Doctrine is explained. One year after, it was voted as official doctrine, which was in 1980. It states, while no single scriptural passage states formally the doctrine of the Trinity, it is assumed as a fact by Bible writers and mentioned several times, only by faith can we accept the existence of the Trinity. Page 4. Fernando L. Canali, Andrews University. Handbook of Seventh-day Adventist Theology, Seventh-day Adventist Encyclopedia, Volume 12, page 138. Doctrine of God, the concept of the Trinity, namely the idea that the three are one, is not explicitly stated, but only assumed. 1981, President Ronald Reagan took, took his inaugural oath. On January 20, 1981, Reagan started, startled the occult world by taking his oath of office from the West Wing of the Capitol and not the East Wing, as all his predecessors have done. When President Reagan decided to become the first U.S. president to take his oath from the West Wing of the Capitol, he faced an obelisk known as the Washington Monument. This fact meant that the, he was sending the, the strongest possible signal to fellow Illuminists all the world over that. After 205 years of pursuing the goal of establishing New World Order, the kingdom of the Antichrist plan was in entering its final phase. So the secret sign to be given to the Jesuits worldwide when this took place is that Protestantism has been wiped out. This aligned with the statement made by ex-Jesuit priests. All the mainstream churches were taken over under the control of Rome by 1980.
But from before, but from even before this time of 1981, you can see firsthand the influence of Rome with just the simple architecture of the United States Capitol building in comparison to St. Peter and St. Paul's Cathedral in Rome. Friends, the beast and its image. The central object in, at the Vatican found in St. Peter's Square is an Egyptian obelisk, a, sim, a giant sundial symbolizing sun worship, worship of the three gods of the sun, the, the rising sun, the midday sun, and the sun, and the sunset sun. This came from the Temple of Isis. Every president since Ronald Reagan, Bush, Clinton, w George W. Bush had similarly taken under oaths of office facing the obelisk. It is difficult to think of a more despicable satanic symbol than the obelisk. All occultists literally worship the Egyptian sun God Ra, whom they believe resides within any obelisk while facing the obelisk. A person is also worshiping the evil satanic spirit within. Freemasons, and other occults absolutely revered the phallus. The Washington Monument is strategically placed so that leaders of Congress and the White House can face the obelisk daily just as all devout occultists are required to do. Every president is inaugurated, as we call it. This word comes from the Latin word inaugurare, which means to take omens. Tormont, Webster Illustrated Encyclopedic Dictionary, um, a most occult term for this reason, the very date of presidential inauguration is planned every four years on January 20. Every month, the 20th day is the beginning of the occult cycle of astrology. Further, there are precisely 13 days between January 20 to the high satanic day called in bold Grand Hogs Grand Day of Jan February 2nd. 1982, dearly beloved, the Seventh Heaven's Church signs the baptism, Eucharist, Ministry, B-E-N document from Spiritism in the Seventh-day Adventist Church, pages 86-89 by Colin and Russell Standish, Heart, Heartland Publish, publication 1995, and the capitulation to the ecumenical movement by Colin Standish. The church continues in 1984, baptismal vow reformatted pro Trinity language. 1985, a new church hymnal takes the place of older attempted revised hymnal from the 1940s. 1986, the official doctrine of the church is stated in the church manual. There is one God, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, the unity of three co-eternal persons. 1988, Seventh-day Adventist believed 27 fundamental beliefs, but book is published strongly Trinitarian, drafted by essentially one man, P.G. Dumstage, in connection with 194 persons from 10 world divisions. His doctor of degree, Damstig, degree came from the Free Reform University of A. Amsterdam. It was then parodied and promoted by J.R. Spanger, editor of a ministry magazine. Leroy Frome previously had the same position. This is just one of the main books of the New Order prophesied by Ellen G. White. The Coming of the Comforter, Leroy Frome, Question and Doctrine, Leroy Frome, E.E. E. Reed, Roy Allen Anderson, T.E. Unraw, Seventh Day Asbid Lee, 27, A Biblical Exposition of Fundamental Doctrines, P.G. Downstig. Movement of Destiny, Roy Fong, the Trinity, Woodrow Widden, Jerry Moon, John Reeve, Understanding the Trinity, Max Hutton, Ellen White, and the Trinity, John Vorman, Exploring the Trinity, One God or Three, Dog Bachelor, The Sonship of Christ by Ty Gibson. I was compelled, according to the Freemason Leroy Edwin Fromm, to search out a score of valuable books written by men outside our faith. The next logical and inevitable step involved revision of certain standard works so as to eliminate statements that taught and thus perpetrated erroneous views on the Godhead, Trinity, Triangular Godhead. 1990, at the General Conference session in Indianapolis, a Catholic priest spoke and prayed from the pulpit. The conference communication director told the local newspaper that we no longer believe that we did a, a hundred years ago concerning comments on the great controversy about the papacy. It has watered down our church. Three angels' messages. 1991, the second issue of the Adventist Review, Roy Adams, editor, declares WCC accentuation of the Holy Spirit and the Eucharist fits into the ambit of the three angels' messages. What a lie. What a distortion by Roy Adams. More people are now studying their Bibles and are worshiping the Father and Son. The Roman bishop would say, what? They are heretics. They must worship our three-in-one trinity God to be saved. 
1993, George Knight, the professor and prominent Seventh-day Adventist theologian, makes this startling confession in Mystery Magazine, October 20, October 1993. In fact, probably George Knight regretted writing this unofficial publication of the Trinitarian Ministry Magazine. Most of the founders of Seventh-day Adventism would not be able to join the church today if they had to subscribe to the denomination's fundamental beliefs. More specifically, most would not be able to agree to belief number two, which is true, the doctrine of the Trinity. In all actuality, they would have included all the founders, including Ellen G. White and pioneers of the early Seventh-day Adventist church. It should be alarming to today's membership. 1994, William Johnson, editor of the Adventist Review, writes, Adventist beliefs have changed over the years under the impact of present truth. What a lie from William Johnson. Impact of present truth. No, it's return to Rome. Return to error. Most startling is the teaching regarding Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Adventist Review, January 6, 1994. While the pre-existence of Christ is held, the divine begotten sonship of Christ as held by the official world church up to the 1940s is defined as a false doctrine, as Johnson puts it. This man, William Johnson, was instrumental in educating as well the church that the founders of the original Seventh-day Adventist were in error. Ellen G. White, letter 242, October 19, 1903, the fundamental principles that have sustained the work for the last 50 years. From the time Ellen G. White accepted the 1872 and affirmed it and lived it until she died, they were the fundamental principles. 1995. 56th General Conference World Session in Utrecht, Netherlands. The Vatican flag is carried through the meeting hall in a singular fashion amidst an unusually loud ovation. The Pope, in, the Pope and I descended from the same father that makes us brothers who should not go around making personal attacks on each other. Differences, no matter how legitimate, would not justify the alienation of a member of the family. After all, the Pope and I are brothers. Columbia Union visitor, June 1, 1995, quoting Mitchell Tyner the Associate General Counsel for the General Conference of the Seventh-day Adventist. The ordination of women to the church as ministers is again a key issue in the vote against the ordination of women to ministries in overwhelming 1,481 to 673. 2,600 delegates from 205 countries attended with approximately 18,000 plus people present in total. 20 observer, observers representing other faiths are also in attendance. You see, friends, the facts will not lie. What happened to William Johnson? Well, William Johnson was one of the elders of this evangelical mega church, like, wanted to be like the Sunday Trinitarian mega church, Crosswalk Redlands. He is one of the elders during that, before his death. So let us hear a little bit of the introduction by this. Apostate Trinitarian Seventh-day Adventist. Apostate because they departed from the original faith, the original principles of Seventh-day Adventists. Let us hear a little bit of their discussion. Johnson Elder, William Johnson, probably more official, um, who is a member of our church and just um, a wonderful friend to me. And Bill, will you tell us a little Bill Johnson, one of the elders of the mega church, Seventh-day Adventist evangelical concept campus instead of churches, innovative, distorting the truth, destroying the health reform message, is the church that William Johnson would like to have. This is the effect of departing from the uh, original fundamental principles of the Seventh-day Amethyst. What's the effect? Friends, the effect is so clear. The effect is people are now people are now led and misled to believe that their carnal life should not be touched. That what they do, say, or wear, whatever dress they can, whatever food, is not anymore the, the uh, 
the issue the issue is they can live free they can continue in whatever they want to do repentance is undermined diminishing the message this is the result of the apostasy of the seventh day of his church look at this church service you thought you are in a nightclub you thought you are in a bar you thought you're in a disco places with all this man woman centered worship entertainment such a low blow to the holiness that the pioneers were preaching have mercy of god they don't want to be judged but look at what they are doing look at the entertainment even the words of the songs are so unbiblical look at the look at the carnality of holiness worship they say holiness but look at them i'm purposely not using the music because it's so evil it's so lullabying into channeling to worship satan that i cannot stand i used to be a part of this system i used to serve under the leaders of this church a leader of this church i used to serve and now i wake i awaken and now i condemn heresy in its actual real form heresy by departing from the truth the leadership of this church had misled and deceived so many people with their mega church desire to prosper the trinitarian church look at this way of preaching i cannot allow the words to mesmerize and hypnotize people the uh, the uh, messaging is more on carnality banality and twisting of the scripture corruption of the word of god old religion is obsolete new religion is what they are bannering new religion money millions of dollars campuses concert like adopting corrupted christian music and so forth and so on this is the impact the rise of the seventh day adventist evangelical mega church in fact we don't want to use sda name anymore i praise god at least they are not bearing it it's a small headline they wanted like the church called crosswalk redlands church a very deceptive name that is not the message and mission of the original seventh day Adventist pioneers friends i know this message is unpopular but i'm fighting a good fight of faith here we, our church has indeed been hijacked hijacked spiritually physically financially morally our church has been flooded by trinitarian it's just a matter of time when the church will worship sunday in fact crosswalk redlands church as an as an example would open their church doors and worship on the day that christ was resurrected easter they have worshiped last year and they will worship again on sunday this year they will open the church and sing those corrupted christian music with the trinitarian lyrics not even found in the bible and the mesmerizing hypnotic way of repeating and repeating and repeating the words so that the mind the frontal lobe is destroyed and all those who are worshiping are all like going into the bar or going into the nightclubs and or disco houses carnally continuing and not knowing what is the truth oh poor poor souls come out of her my people return to the worship of the one true god our father and his only begotten son before it's too late sodom and gomorrah had entered the seventh Adventist church officially in 1980 the church has been replaced by a counterfeit trinitarian seventh day habitism may god help us may god help us as we fight the good fight of faith against those who are in the forces of evil may god continue to bless us and 
His Son, the real Son, be gracious to us, not the Trinity, until the Son comes.